After 200 days, the Nigerian government lifts the ban on Twitter. And another INEC official resigns and embraces the All Progressive Congress APC as he joins the governorship race. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anna Cole. The Nigerian government has lifted the suspension of Twitter's operations in the country. The ban was placed on social media on the social media platform in June of 2021 after it deleted a controversial tweet by the president, Mohamed Buhari. The government had also accused Twitter of working against Nigeria's interests. The Director General of the National Information Technology Development Agency, Kashifu Abdullahi, announced that the lifting of the suspension um, he announced the lifting of the suspension in a statement. The federal government on June the 4th of 2021 announced the suspension of the platform in Nigeria through the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed. Well, joining us to discuss this is Ini Bagayefiong and Ayo Deji Awobi Yide. Uh, both of them are legal practitioners. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you, Gordon. Great. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Great. Ini, you and I have had this conversation over and over again the past few months um, since Twitter had been banned. And now, all of a sudden, I think I got wind of it sometime um, late last night. I think before I went to bed, I just saw the post uh, about Twitter being lifted, the suspension being lifted. Many people have reacted to it. Some people are relieved. I hear some people are overjoyed. But a group of other people seem to be a bit more... Um, curious as to why government is lifting the ban now. But what are your thoughts? Well, eventually, the so-called ban was going to be lifted because there was no reason for the suspension or the ban to have been imposed in the first place. As I have consistently maintained, it was a decision that was not warranted. It was a decision that was taken in bad faith. So the decision that was taken on account of vengeance in pursuance of vendetta by a regime that felt slighted by what was rightfully perceived by a large section of the population as a genocidal and irresponsible tweet by the president was deleted. That, was, that accounted for the so-called ban that the government imposed. So eventually, the government had to reverse the abnormality that they had forced on the country. But, 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 but in the, the government is saying something different from what, what you're saying. The government is saying that Twitter was suspended in the country as a result of the fact that it was used to cause an uprising of sorts and to try to topple government. But you're here saying that it was this suspension was as a result of a vendetta by the federal government. I'm trying to understand what the government said and what you're saying. Well, does that make sense to you? <laughs> Is that supposed to make sense to any reasonable person? Well, One can rightly describe that as that. I'm not sure that was used to undermine the corporate existence of the country. What exactly does that mean? In clear terms, what, what does it mean? In what way? Specifics. Where, where is the evidence of that? Nothing was pointed out except a very reference to Namdi Kanu. And I'm in court, I'm still in court with them on this, so I don't want to go into the details of the matter in court, but I can also tell you for free that even in court, as I argued before Honorable Justice Faji, you know, two days ago, no single tweet of Namdi Kanu was exhibited in court. Not even one as evidence of inciting the public. And in any event, you cannot apply collective punishment to say that because one person has wrongly used Twitter, just as Buari himself did, because he abused Twitter, he used Twitter in the wrong manner by that particular tweet that he, he put out. You will now suspend the entire platform and deny millions of Nigerians access to it. The regulatory issues that they have raised 
matters pertaining to registration with CSC, with having a representative in Nigeria, compliance with so-called you know, Nigerian laws that they haven't really specifically cited, and other issues, issues of taxation. These are matters that could have been resolved without the very responsible ban that was placed on that platform. In any event, these conditions, these requirements have not been imposed in like manner on other platforms. We still have Facebook, we have Instagram, we have Snapchat, and other social media apps that Nigerians are still using. Why is it that Twitter was isolated? Hmm. Why is it that this ban was targeted specifically at Twitter? I have told you the reason, and I made that point clear to the court, that the court should go beyond the baseless statement that they have made about the corporate resistance of Nigeria being challenged, which I said is hanging in the head, and probe the real intent, the real purpose, because the intent is important in determining the propriety of the action. Mm. If this was about regulatory requirement, and I have also said that as I speak to you, nobody has been able to convince me, no lawyer in this country has been able to convince me that there is any law, any enactment, any act of parliament in this country that enables the government to take the sort of measure that they took. None. It was after this arbitrary decision was taken, the Lam Mohammed went before the National Assembly to promote a bill to amend the NBC Act to allow for them to regulate social media. And they also tried to introduce the social media bill that was wrongly rejected at the public hearing. What that shows you is that the government started regulation through sanction, which, as I argued previously, cannot be done, should not be tolerated. You cannot start regulation through sanction. You must set the necessary legislative framework in place. That has not been done till date. Okay. Interesting. Let me go um, to, to our, our, our next guest. Now, it's very interesting, Barrister. I will, I'll pick up from where Barrister Niebuhr just, you know, stopped. Um, the government, in his words, were high-handed. Uh, he talked about the fact that in courts, he, they've not been able to present any evidence as to the case that they made or the reasons they gave Nigerians for putting Twitter uh, on hold or suspending the services of Twitter in Nigeria. Now, they ignored the law. That's number one. Secondly, there was an ECOWAS court, um, you know, um, judgment that said that, you know, the government did not have a right to suspend Twitter and that Twitter should be brought back. Uh, well, we've not really heard anything about that. Media houses had to comply. We were given an order. In fact, that order was much, much more like if you were still on social media, you might get sanctioned by the NBC. And that's also for the telecommunications companies, you know, across the country. So why exactly do you think that the government is this high-handed in terms of issues such as this? Well, thank you. I think it's very evident that the um, ban or so-called suspension of Twitter in Nigeria um, is largely born out of Number one, the NSAS protest. And number two, and I think that was the um, grain of rice that tilted the scale, the uh, removal or taking down of President Buhari's tweet. Now, uh, the initial reaction of the government was to just ban it. And uh, the government needs to realize that this is not 1983. This is a, a democratic government, uh, which means that uh, freedom of speech and how you censure it needs to go through the appropriate channel. And like... Um, Ini said, uh, all of these things about introducing the bill came after the, the occurrence of the event. In other words, uh, there's nothing that has been done now that the government could not have done before it proceeded with the suspension. In other words, engaging Twitter, they could have been able to proceed with Twitter to engage them actively and effectively to ensure that all of these, their concerns are adequately met. And if you look at the statement that was issued by the DG of NETA, um, that's Mr. Abdullahi, uh, the concerns that the government raised were that Twitter was being used to propagate fake news and polarizing Nigeria and also amounted um, to a threat to our national security. Now, there's nothing in the um, statement issued 
detailing the conditions that the Twitter needs to meet that identifies to us or to any reasonable Nigerian that all of these concerns that led to the banning in the first place have been met. So you, you, what, what you have, are, you know, number one, we can agree that the ban was very, I and dead, was ill-advised, was hasty. Now, this lifting of the ban also, I mean, we all know that the lifting of the ban is in good time uh, for the political season. So uh, a lot of the political activists and... I'm sorry, let me come in there. Why do you think that this is... I mean, because I've heard people... I've, we've seen comments on social media and people are saying, well, this is just because they need to use the social media for political reasons. But why? I mean, just like Ini said, there are other social platforms that they can use. Why Twitter? If Twitter was that important to Mr. President and his cohorts... Why did they have to ban it for so long and now want to use it when it's convenient? I'm just, you know, pushing the argument. Exactly. So, so, so just um, buttressing my point. Now, you would, you would realize that a lot of Nigerian youths use Twitter more than they use Instagram and Facebook and the rest. So Twitter is actually the most used social media platform in Nigeria. Yes, close book com Facebook comes a close second, but Twitter is largely used by, I mean, the enlightened populace. And if you notice yesterday when the ban was lifted, a lot of these polit politicians and their, and their courts were tweeting messages uh, announcing their um, resumption Return. of activities on Twitter. Uh, you have uh, the presidential aides also did the same as well, announcing uh, that they are back on Twitter. And now it all ties in to the fact that we are now here in a season where they need to get their message across. They need to find a way of pushing their candidates and ensuring that uh, the people, the enlightened uh, people who use Twitter, uh, have an idea of who and who is running for office or who, who desires um, to take control of our, of our destiny as a people. So, because if you look at the statement that was issued by Mr. Abdullah, ask yourself the question, has Twitter registered in Nigeria? Of course not. Has Twitter paid taxes to Nigeria? Of course not. Has Twitter appointed a country representative for Nigeria? Of course not. So why exactly is the government in a hurry to lift the ban on Twitter when Twitter has not even made the conditions that they themselves... But I'm also, curious, I'm also curious as to why Twitter is quiet about it. Because if you're saying that Twitter has not met these conditions, uh, they seem very tight-lipped about it, meaning that they're just going with it because they just want to continue to have Nigerians on Twitter. I mean, I'm saying if the record needs well, to be set straight, if the government is saying Twitter has done this and Twitter hasn't really complied, why are they tight-lipped yes. about it? Well, I think that I've regard to the engagement that they had with Twitter. Don't forget that there was the presidential committee that was set up and then there was the technical committee that was set up. So they've had several months to deal and engage it with Twitter and its, and its uh, employees and its people. So I, 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 there would be some sort of understanding. Uh, I mean, I don't have it, but I, th I would believe that there's some sort of understanding between the government and Twitter. And I do not think that Twitter would want to rock the boat now. I haven't gotten this far. Because don't forget that a lot of uh, Nigerians who actually use Twitter um, um, every day use the VPNs. They use the virtual private networks to continue. Um, the activities and I mean it was it, it went on as smoothly as oh I think that we lost uh, audio with um, okay I are you still there yeah I'm here yeah we can lost, you hear me yes we lost your audio for a second oh I'm so sorry about that so I said uh, the reason why the government has decided to intro, um, issue the statement and to leave the ban is very obvious to the naked eye um, and that is because they want to use this season. I mean, they have barely a few months to elections, and they need Twitter to push the agenda. Because there is no, if you look at the statement that was issued by them, there is nothing on paper that suggests that uh, the reasons for the ban have actually been uh, complied with or, or addressed by Twitter. I mean, how do you tell, how, has Twitter been able to uh, stop the spread of fake news, on, uh, fake news by Nigerians? Has it been able to solve our uh, tribal issues or differences? Has Twitter been able to improve our, our national security? Those are questions that need to be answered. Mm. And I do not see any answer from the government for now. Uh, back to you, Ini. Um, still talking about issue, the issue of high-handedness. I mean, the, the, they, they've talked about you know, propagating fake news and propaganda and all of that as some of the reasons why Twitter was brought down. What has changed? What will change? Now that they brought Twitter back... 
Uh, is the government going to tell us, assure us, that they will not also participate in these propaganda, in this new fake news, or will they not necessarily have to come back to set the record straight on issues that will be put out on that same social media platform? Because Nigerians need to be sure that in the spirit of democracy, and as we get ready for the election season, what they criticize, they will not fall victim of it. If I could ask more questions, in addition to the ones my brother Ayodeji has asked. They claim Twitter existed in Nigeria illegally, having not been cooperated by the Corporate Affairs Commission. And that is the, the fulcrum, the substance of their case, their defense in court. As I speak to you today, <laughs> Has Twitter been registered by CSC? The answer is no. Has Twitter paid a single tax to the Nigerian government as that today? The answer is no. So what has happened differently? Absolutely nothing. All, they has, all that they claim they got was they can I even call that the promising note? I can't call that a promissory note. They just got certain undertakings. They claim they got certain undertakings that Twitter said, Oh, by the first half of 2022, uh, blah, 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 we are going... Oh, I think that connection is lost. Uh, I'm going to come back to you, Ayodeji. Um, let's look at the international community that mostly frowned at, um, you know, the federal government's action at the time, who kept calling on the government to do right. They also frowned at the issues of NSARS and the, you know, but that's not our base, you know, that's not what we're talking about today. I've seen a couple of, you know, international community Twitter handles excited about the fact that Nigeria has restored Twitter. So I'm going to toss the same question I asked Ini back to you. Is, how are we certain that the federal government will do as it says we should do, and everybody else, including the media houses, the newspapers, um, the average Nigerian who's tweeting, how are we certain that they will not fall victim of the same crimes that they're alleging that Nigerians were committing using social media, especially Twitter? Uh, well, um, a very straight answer. There is no certainty um, that we can hold on to from the government. What this government has shown in the past um, six plus years is that um, they do things out of impulse because this Twitter ban itself was not well thought out. Uh, it was, it was ill-advised. Now, if you recall, this same government rose to power on the basis of Twitter. Um, at a point during 2014, 2013, you could see a lot of um, um, criticisms leveled against uh, the former president, Udo Jonathan, at the time. Were those criticisms deserved at the time? Absolutely, yes. Uh, absolutely, yes. The government at the time was not performing, and the, the APC government, uh, the APC at the party, rightly criticized uh, the government. Now, so what has changed with this government? Why are they so, so um, um, not ready to receive criticism? Why are they so not receptive to criticism? And that's a question they should answer. Because now that you, you if you're in government, you're there to serve the people. And if the people have questions to ask, then they should genuinely ask you. Now, if you, if you looked at the statement issued by um, Mr. Abdullahi again, he did say in the statement that the priority of the government is to adapt and not to ban Twitter. Now, if that was the government's priority in the very first place, then there was basically no reason to have suspended or to have banned Twitter in the very first place. You could have engaged Twitter the way they, that the presidential committee did and the judicial committee did without banning Twitter. Now, and that's why we, as lawyers, will ask the questions. Because if the reason for the action, that's for the ban in the very first place, has not been resolved, the issues that you raised in the beginning have not been resolved. What is the guarantee? Or, or what led, what instituted the lifting of the ban? We have not seen any evidence of any um, statement by Twitter. There's no statement by Twitter um, clearly agreeing to all of these conditions. We don't know the their office addresses, even though the, the announcement says that Twitter should be registered in Nigeria in the first quarter. I would have thought that the first condition would be that Twitter would register with the CAC, it doesn't take, doesn't take long. I mean, you have the ease of doing business. Uh, I mean, that would have been a good example, a prime time to use uh, that ease of doing business platform to have Twitter registered swiftly. 
then you would have an office address. And then we can say that Twitter is taking Nigeria seriously. But as it appears to us, it seems that um, it's all a political game that is uh, well orchestrated. Uh, and of course, at, at the right time, because the ordinary Nigerians have found a way around Twitter, um, uh, around the Twitter ban. They use the VPNs, and they use it effectively. And if, if I may say, some of some Nigerians on Twitter are already complaining about the resumption of political activities on Twitter, because what that did was, uh, effectively, government and political party agents could not tweet. So um, there was little or no friction mm. as it relates to engaging government. They couldn't tweet for about several months, and there was a lot of peace on the timeline. But now that they are back, between yesterday and today, I mean, you've had a lot of um, issues going back and forth. So um, the, the, the government is the one that is coming back to Twitter, not the people. The people have always been on Twitter, mm. and uh, they found a way around it. So it's a government that should be welcomed back to Twitter. <laughs> All right. Um we're in campaign season. Uh, I always keep reminding us, uh, you know, everybody that campaign season is around the corner. And um, looking at the gov from what you and Ini have been saying, uh, it makes people really, um, you know, look twice at the government. But how will this Twitter ban and, of course, the restoration or lifting of the suspension um, rub off on the government and the ruling party as the elections are coming? Uh, well, I, I, I see a situation where the government, of course, will try to um, um, relax a few of its iron-deadness, uh, try and relax a little bit, particularly knowing that um, it's an outgoing government, that the government will be uh, out of power in about uh, 15, 15 to 15 months, there about a maximum of um, 16 months. So I, I, I see that it's a point where the government will try and um, let down its guard and, and allow the political gladiators to take over. And of course, don't forget also that even the officials of government and government agencies were also affected by this ban. Um, I just saw recently a tweet by the Federal Fire Service announcing that they are now back on Twitter. Now, I mean, something, an agency as important as the Federal Fire Service, where people could easily reach them on Twitter, had to suspend its activities for several months. And small businesses had to do the same as well. Uh, for several months. Uh, so the effect of the ban on, 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 on the people, on businesses, on even government agencies and government establishments, I mean, it was, it was only felt by everyone. Okay, but as it relates to this political season, I believe that the government, I do not see them banning Twitter uh, until they leave. I believe that they would also use it to push um, forward their okay. achievements, uh, their propaganda and their agenda uh, for the next election. Ini, uh, thank you for coming back. Apologies for the connection issues. Um, finally, in closing, um, what kind of, I mean, we know that the government has done this somewhat to save face or, um, you know, for whatever reasons, maybe for the election season. But what you, as a person who has been advocating for human rights and all of those things, um, what, what message should the average Nigerian be going away with, with all that has happened in the space and time that Twitter has been banned and restored? What should we be going away with? So lots of people have been saying so many things um, for Nigerians to take heed of. But for you, um, especially being in the forefront of fighting this Twitter ban, what should we be going away with as we get ready for the elections? Beyond counting days for this regime of peril to come to an end, those who participated in the atrocities that have been committed against Nigerians, the Dragonian measures, the high handedness, the party that is complicit, the political party and the political actors who are complicit in these things that have happened, who have endorsed these things who have been silent on the impunity of this regime, must be punished in the next election. Nigerians must, and that is the point that I, made on, I made on Twitter. I said, look, as citizens, we must imbibe the culture of punishing politicians and political parties that inflict pains on us. The reason why people go into offices and do whatever they like is because of the absence of the policy of consequence. They know nothing will happen. They know they will still be voted for. They will know they will still have people rally for them. But when they do these things that they know that they will pay a heavy price, people become circumspect. 
people begin to think before they act. So I am saying that it is for Nigerians, the enlightened population, to ensure that those who were implicit, either by their act or omission or by their silence, are punished during the 2023 election. That is the only way that one can rightly say that indeed we have learned lessons as a country. There has to be a price for this. They shouldn't get away with it. There has to be a price. Those who were silenced when this ban was implemented, those who came out to support it, we must identify them and we must punish them at the polls. That's my position. Well, the internet never forgets, so those messages and those tweets will be found. Iniba Refyong, Ayo Deji, Awobi Ide, both are legal practitioners. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for speaking with us. Thank, thank you. you for having me. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. When we return, we discuss the influx of INEC officials into partisan politics. Stay with us.